Okay, this is the start of lesson two on functions. And um, functions are new for you. Um, function, a function is the mapping of the domain with the range, okay? And I'm gonna explain what all this is. So an example of a function, the an example of the function would be f of x, this is the function of x, is equal to x squared plus x minus 10, and then it says find f of five. Now, these are not hard to do. Uh, the domain is your x values. Domain is x values. And the range is equal to the y values. And when you're looking at a graph, okay, of a line, there is typically one x value to every y value. So say I wanted to plot one, two, x is the domain and y is your range. Okay, so it's basically plotting lines, it's circles that you can plot and we're gonna not go into all those but that is what a function is. So we're gonna solve for them, and this represents the range, the y value. So when you look at this, don't get mixed up and think you're gonna put the x value of f of five, they're gonna ask you to solve this, f of five, the function of five, don't get mixed up and put it in here. You want to put it in here and solve for this because just think of f of x as the y value. So when I do that, 5 squared plus 5 minus 10 equals 25 plus 5 minus 10 equals 30 minus 10 is 20. So the function of x is 20. So when you put 5 in for x, your y value or your range value is 20. So this is the same as y. So that's really all there is to it. That's basically all you're going to have to, to know so far before you get into Algebra 2. Now I'm going to show you how it works on a graph too, but let's do one more of these. Okay. Let's say f of x is x squared is equal to x squared plus 1. And you find, I want you to find f of x, which is, e, uh, is f of x, f of x plus 2, sorry. I'm leaving it for him here. F of x plus 2 is what they want you to find. So what you do here is you just put this amount in for x only. Just for x, okay? It, remember, this is your y value. So you're going to put this value just in for x. So this will be x plus 2. And then you don't want to forget the little squared plus 1. And then you're going to, this, this means x plus 2, x plus 2. Then you're going to multiply those just by distributing here. And you're going to have x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4 plus 1. Don't forget the 1. And that equals x squared plus 4x plus 5. And that's as far as they want you to go right here on this one. 
that is simplified right here. Okay, so then on page 338, they do have the definition of a function. Definition on page 338 of a function. And basically, it's what I put up here, and then it is precisely, it's the domain mapped to precisely one item of the range, and each element of the range corresponds to at least one member of the domain. Okay, so we'll do some more of that. There's uh, following chapters that will cover some of that. But remember, your domain is your x values, and your range is your y values. Okay, now we're going to look at a graph. So basically, well, let me backtrack. Basically, what you're going to do when you have these f of x functions, they're going to give you something like this. They're going to tell you to solve it and or simplify it. And what you're going to do is you're going to remember that this is a y. This is like y, another name for y. Then you're going to put whatever they have to say find. They'll say find this. You will put that value in for x, then you will solve for your y value. So what you're doing is finding a specific range that goes with your domain. Okay, x and y value. Now we're going to look at a graph. Okay. And if we have a graph, there's y, x here, and say that the equation that goes with that says f of x is equal to 2x. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to plot that. Okay, now I have taught you how to plot in line format. Remember when we have y equals mx plus b? And I don't really know how much we've talked about this, but you can also plot by just picking numbers. Okay, so if I select, remember this is y over here. If I select a 1 for x, what's y going to be? y is going to be 2, isn't it? 2 times 1 will equal y. If I select a 0 for x, what's y going to be? 0. If I select a 2 for x, what's y going to be? 4. Okay, then these are points on your line. You can plot these. So we have 0, 0 here. We're going to go x1 and up 2 here. That's, that's one 2 point right here. 1 over for x, 2 up. That point is right here. So we plotted this one, this one. This point is 2 for x, 1, 2, and up 4 right here. Now we have our line here. So this line represents this right here. Okay, now we can do it this way, and we have 0 for b, right? If we did it this way, f of x equals 2x, and we did it in y equals mx plus b, we would have 0 for b, our slope is 2, 1, which means we rise 1, 2 over 1, same line, okay? This is the same. But I want you to do these problems with selecting points, okay? It's easier this way. Select points and then put it back in your equation and solve for y. That's what we're doing. We're doing functions right here. We're doing, we're putting in our domain, our x value to select and then to come up with a range. Okay, so do them that way. Then, the, this is what I'm going to show you, okay? This is the part that says, they're going to ask you, what is the domain of this function? Okay, the domain not only includes these points, but the domain is all the x values represented in this line. So, if you notice, this line starts... And it ends where? It goes on forever, doesn't it? So it is going to potentially have an x value everywhere, isn't it? It's 
it's going to have an x value everywhere. So when you plot a point, when you want to select a point here on this line, you're going to have an x value and a y value, aren't you? This goes on forever. So the domain of this function, the x values of this function, are all the real numbers. What about the range? What about the range? Well, the range. You select a point on this line, anywhere you select a point, you're going to have a y value, aren't you? You're going to have an x value and a y value, and it's going to go on forever. You're going to have them down here, you're going to have them up here, positive, negative, they're going to go on forever. So your domain of this function, of, I mean your range, excuse me, your domain is all the real numbers, but your range is also all real numbers. So when they ask you what is the domain and range of this particular graph, your domain is going to be all the real numbers because it goes on forever. It's going to hit every x value in there. You're going to, every point you have will hit an x value. I mean, if it's one million out here, this line's going to hit it eventually because it goes on forever. And all the range values, same thing with the ranges. It's going to go up and down forever and this way forever. So you're going to hit them all. Okay, now let's look at another graph that's a little bit different. Um, so they're going to ask you for the domain and range of this next graph. And let me show you what it looks like. It's have got, we are right here at this point, and it goes up here, let's see, four, three over, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four. So it's right here, it's at three, four. That one, and then this one goes over negative two, and up three, and it is a hollow circle. Do you remember doing that? So let, let me talk about this. Okay, this is our graph here. And this is this one's at negative two, three. Okay? This is a hollow circle. And what does that mean? Do we remember what that means on our on our when we were graphing lines? That means this number is not included. Okay, so that number, this x and this y value will be not included in your domain and range. This one's a filled in circle. It will be included. Okay, so let's look at this. There's not going to be any negative y's in your range, okay? Your range is the y values. There's nothing down here. So your range is going to be made up of it's going to stop here because this line doesn't go on forever. So let's look. What's our x values going to be? Our x values are going to be, so we'll just do like this. If you do like, the x values are going to be in between here. Okay? That's where this one is. That's where this one is. So this is negative 2, which will not be included. And this one is 3 which will be. So x is going to be greater than negative 2 and less than 3. 3 is included. Remember when they're included? So the filled in circles get this type greater than or equal to or less than or equal to and the the ones with the hollow circles just get greater than or e uh, greater than or less than. Remember, remember this. We did this. Okay. I hope you can see this. Now, with this, this actually represents. This is our domain, and that's the answer they're looking for, right there. That's our domain. This graph stops here and here. It will it be in between. The x values would be in between here and here. X. There's the little, the little little sign here. X is less than or equal to 3. That's a filled-in circle. 
x is less than or equal to 3, and x is, here's the big sign, greater than negative 2, not including 2. Remember, it's a, it's a, this was a uh, negative 2. This was a hollow circle, so there would be no line underneath here. Okay, so now that's the x, that's the domain. Now we want the range. And the range is going to be in between here, right, and up here to this one. So the range is going to be the y value, which is 0 greater than or equal to 0. Remember, this is a filled-in circle. And, oh, I mean, and also... Up here, the y value goes to 4. That's the farthest it goes. This one goes to 3. This one goes to 4. So all of these, this is what's going to be considered answers to the domain, what the domain and range are. So this one is y is greater than or equal to 0. And y is less than or equal to Four. So this is the big side here. And then so you read this. Y is greater than or equal to zero because there's the big side, so it's a greater than. You read this one. Y is less than or equal to four. Now, these can be switched. I mean, you don't have to have it in this, but you've got to keep, you've got to read it correctly. So when you're reading these, you will start with the middle letter here, the x, you'll read it this way, greater than, negative 2, and then you'll read it this way, x is less than or equal to 3. Okay, so that is uh, pretty much the lesson. You can, they have, in your lesson, they have put all, have used all the proper notation here, I am not that concerned with that. I want you to understand what you're doing, and then later you can learn the exact proper notation. Uh, and so in the book it will be, uh, it's got this same answer, but they are saying the same thing I am, but ha they have all the little notations. And anyway, I'm not worried about that. In this class, I'm not worried about that. You will have to learn that eventually, but I am not concerned about that. I want you to understand what you're doing. So there is some practice problems if you want to do them. Check your answers. If you have questions, um, just email me and let me know. And your assignments are have been sent to your mom by email. That's it for lesson 82.